Good Friday. Happy Good Friday. Fantastic. We've got traditional Good Friday weather. Yeah, look, have a look at this. Have a look at this. Hang on. Can you see him? Oh, you've just missed him. He's been he's been rolling around in the grass this morning enjoying the the, the Good Friday weather. That's Max, by the way, he's come to join us. Good morning to everybody, and I hope that you've had a great week. Strange week, I'm sure, uh, but I hope you've had a great week. And we're on this amazing, remarkable day. Uh, Good Friday and we're going to celebrate that this morning together. Now um, we do apologise for the sound of the cars going by. I don't know where these people are going. They're all supposed to be on lockdown. Essential journeys only. I don't think it is essential journeys. Isn't it? No. I'm sure everybody would would be observing the rules. I'm sure everybody's observing the rules, but anyway, that is beside the point. This is Sheffield. Are they all like? Are they all like? (laughs) Really good people. Really Really good. Really good people in Sheffield. Best people. Better than all the people. Right, okay, so, okay. Anyway, back to the point. Um, it's great to be with you this morning. We're going to have some time just together in the presence of God. And um, and we're going to start this morning with the Easter story. Now, there are so many creative ways that we've seen that people tell stories. And we liked this one uh, in particular. And, um, and so we'd like you to uh, have a listen to the Easter story as told by some very, very uh, great characters. As the dog hairs go across the go screen. Go across the screen. This last Friday was the hardest day I ever lived. All of the disciples, myself included, were in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. We were all wondering why we were in the garden in the middle of the night. I mean, I'm usually in bed before 10. Jesus was sweating and praying like he had no time left. He asked us to pray with him, and we did for like 15 minutes. Then everyone was asleep and James was snoring like a hippo. What? It was way past my bedtime. Jesus woke us up a couple of times, but I hardly remember what he said. Then, all of a sudden, everything started. All of the guards and religious leaders led by Judas came up to us. All I remember was waking up confused, everyone yelling, Peter was flailing around with a sword, and ears were being cut off. I only cut one ear off. Besides, Jesus put it back on the guy's head. Where did Peter get a sword anyway? I mean, who in their right mind gave it to him? He said, what? Jesus calmed everyone down, but then they arrested him. And we ran for our lives. I suppose I knew that Jesus would be taken, but it still scared me so much. After I gathered my wits, the guys and I went to where Jesus was being accused. It was ridiculous. Men started spewing lies. Men paid by the Pharisees came forward to testify against Jesus. It was all a big lie. John was pretty scared. Yeah, I heard John was terrified. Are you kidding me? James wet his tunic and ran away, and Peter pretended like he didn't even know us. Regardless, Jesus was finishing being tried by the Sanhedrin when the rooster crowed. Huh, rooster crowing. Doesn't sound familiar. Christ had told Peter that Peter would deny him. Okay, okay, like I said, it wasn't really the best day for any of us. The priest handed over Jesus to the Romans, saying that they wanted him to be killed. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, didn't know what to do. They stripped my son and beat him till he bled. 
they put a cross on his back and led him and two thieves up a hill called Golgotha. They nailed him to the cross and crucified him. He was crying to heaven, Father, why have you forsaken me? As Jesus passed away, the sky grew dark, the earth shook, and the temple veil tore into two. I heard a Roman soldier say, Surely this was the Son of God. Mary Magdalene and I went to the tomb where he was buried on the day after the Sabbath. We were both crying and weeping. We barely said a word all the way there. When we arrived at the tomb, we could not believe what we saw. An angel was at the tomb and told us Jesus has risen. We ran back and told them all. Then Peter and John ran to see for themselves. That John sure is fast. He beat me there by a mile. Well, everyone's faster than Peter. We couldn't believe that he was alive. I didn't expect it. To be fair, he told us like a hundred times to expect this. Oh yeah. We were back at the house that evening and Jesus showed up. We all worshiped God and spent a few more days with Jesus. Then he ascended into heaven. We were lost apart from God. But God came to us. Jesus died to pay our price. He defeated death and rose again. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. That was great, wasn't it? It was good to uh, hear the Easter story in lots of different creative ways. We're going to worship now. We know one of the things that people have said about our online stream mm. services is how much they've enjoyed the sense of worship. Um, wasn't sure how it was going to come together or how it was going to work, but it's been good and we're so yes. grateful to those that have spent time, the leaders, mm. you know, Paul and uh, Jonathan uh, and others that have spent time recording uh, songs and, and taking time to lead us in worship. And today we've got Chris. Chris Booth has mm. uh, put together our worship for us and uh, he's going to lead us now. Let's sing here is Love Vast as the Ocean. Sing, see his love nailed to a cross. Oh 
Thanks, Chris. That was great. Thank you. We've got Louise who's going to read for us now, and she's going to read a passage from the Bible, and it's Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 10, and she's reading from the Passion Translation. Uh, so if you've got that, then you can follow along with her. Straight after that, we've got Graham, who will be sharing God's word with us this morning. Now, we've had a bit of a sneak preview, and uh, we were really blessed by it. And then straight after that, we're going to pray together. So take the opportunity. Uh, the, pr- the prayer will come up on the screen. Uh, just yeah just pray that over your family and over your neighbors and your friends um so here's louise welcome to today's reading from romans 5 6 to 10 the passion translation for when the time was right the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for the sinners who were entirely helpless weak and powerless to save themselves now who of us would dare to die for the sake of a wicked person We can all understand if someone was willing to die for a truly noble person. But Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. And there is still much more to say of his unfailing love for us. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now righteous in my sight. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. So, if while we were still enemies, God fully reconciled us to himself through the death of his son, then something greater than friendship is ours. Now that we are at peace with God, and because we share in his resurrection life, how much more we will be rescued from sin's dominion. Hi everyone. Today's a very different Good Friday, isn't it? Most of us would be in church this morning, but instead we're at home watching screens. Later on, most people would be with family or out in the countryside, but coronavirus has changed all that. Even so, I don't know about you, but I've been amazed at the sense of worship and the sense of being part of a church family during these online services. We really need to thank people who have been putting them together, and particularly Nick and Erica Lugg. So we all know that we're in a crisis. We're in the crisis in this country and right across the world. We heard this week that the clinic in Sachibondo, Zambia, where Graham and Steph Reed are working, is being changed into an isolation clinic for people with CV19. They will have a part-time doctor and a few more nurses, but equipment is in very short supply. So there's a crisis in the UK and there's a crisis in Zambia. And this crisis is creating fear, worry and loneliness. But within that there is good news because at Easter the Easter story tells us that we have a God who knows all about crisis. In the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest and crucifixion Jesus was in anguish Knowing that his trial and crucifixion were before him, he was sweating drops of blood as evidence of his stress. But he still says, Father, I really don't want to do this, but I'm willing to do it if it's your will that I should. Later, on the cross, when he was being crucified, Jesus felt alone as he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If you feel that in this crisis you're suffering alone, if you're worried, scared about the future, Jesus understands. On the cross, he knew what it was to be alone 
and to be suffering. What is your concept of God? Is it a God who's remote from us, sitting in an ivory tower, away from all the problems and difficulties of human life? It's not the God I know. It's amazing that we have a God who has been in crisis and who understands crisis. We have a God who understands loneliness, worry and suffering. Hebrews 4.15 specifically tells us that Jesus understands. It says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Jesus understands our fears and our worries about the future. He understands when things seem too much and we can't see any way forward. In fact, Jesus turns all, all our concepts, all our human concepts of God upside down. In Jesus, we have a God who sacrifices himself for his people, for his children. A God who has suffered and died because he loves us. A Father God who is real and close to us. Someone who is with us in a crisis and who is no stranger to a crisis. As Christians, in Jesus, we have a God who chose to go through a crisis and chose to die because he loved us. A God who sent his Son to be a man who is able to empathise with all our dif difficulties and worries. Philippians 2 says, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. And being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Passage talking about Jesus. This God paid the highest price so that we could know him as Lord and Saviour, so that we could have a close and loving relationship with him. This is the God we know as Christians, a close, loving, self-sacrificing God. If you don't know this God who loves you and cares for you, then I'd invite you to get in touch and we can tell you more. Maybe you want to use the prayer button or you can contact us through the website. So on Good Friday, we feel sad, we feel awestruck as we remember that the Son of God died for our sins. Yet we know that the joy of Easter Sunday is only three days away. I'm going to finish by reading Luke 23, verse 33. This verse shows the love that Jesus has for us, in that even as he was being crucified, he called upon his Father to forgive those who were causing his suffering. It says, When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Amen. Some of us are OK. Some of us are not. This is an Easter prayer for both. May God take the hope that pours out of the empty tomb and pour it into your life in surprising ways. May the healer comfort you during this season. May his compassion remind you that this is only a season. May the Lord sustain those who are without jobs, 
and may his sustaining mercies appear new every morning. May the Lord awaken us to the miracle of Easter, and may we believe now more than ever in the limitless power of the Almighty. Where there is fear, let faith win the day. Where there is anxiety, let peace prevail. Where there is wisdom, let it be multiplied. Where there is despair, let joy break through. May God draw near to the brokenhearted, and may you fully know the reassurance of his presence. May the Spirit breathe new life into your new normal, and may your heart be resurrected with confidence and courage. Lord, hear our cry. Lord, heal our world. Lord, be glorified. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed all that and it's lifted your spirits. We need nothing more than these ministries. And we're so grateful to everybody that's yes. contributed mm. in whatever way, whether it's in leading worship, in the Bible readings, or in sharing the word as Graham mm. has done today. We're so grateful and thankful because mm. it, it just helps bring us together as the family of God. Yes. We know that many, many people have connected with us uh, through these recordings over the, you know, through, from different parts of the world, different parts of the country. Maybe you've never thought of crossing the doorway of a church, but you've taken the opportunity in this season to connect through these online mm. recordings and we're so glad that you have done yes. um, Jonathan's going to lead us now in a hymn When I Survey the Wondrous Cross timeless age old words that are so full of truth mm. and as we worship with that if you I don't know where you are in your journey uh, of faith or your journey in the, in the knowledge of God but if you would like to know more or you would like to talk to someone or you'd like somebody to pray with you or you'd like to receive Jesus for the first time then please make use of the online prayer button if you're watching this uh, on our, our live recording then please use the online prayer button connect with that and somebody will uh, will connect with you and you'll be able to have a conversation with them and uh, they'll be able to help you so Jonathan's going to lead us now and uh, pray that this hymn blesses you yes. as much as it blesses us amen when I survey the wondrous cross when I survey the wondrous cross which the Prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor content on all my pride.
demands my soul, my life, my all, love so amazing, so divine, shall have my soul, my An important. Carry on. An important part. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's his, it's his church. I don't know. We've got quite a lot of bloopers. Are they called bloopers? We'll put them out at Christmas when all this is over. <laughs> when all this is over. Yeah. <laughs> Just to entertain you. <laughs> right. Sorry. Carry on. Right. Thank you. Serious face. An important part of what we do uh, through these online broadcasts is our offering. It's very important and we're so grateful to those that have faithfully given mm -hmm. in the time that we've had. And today's no different. We're going to have an offering uh, today. Uh, we're going to hopefully make it a bit simpler and easier for you. Mm -hmm. We will continue with our text uh, opportunity. That is if you text the word Medahead, all one word, mm -hmm. then a gap and then a number between 1 and 20 to 70085, then Hopefully. Hopefully it should go through. We do know that people have continued to have some problems, but um, try it. Try it and see what could possibly go wrong. So and med ahead, all one word, gap, then the number between 1 to 20, and the number is... 70085. I'm going to put the details on the screen. Now, the new innovation is online giving. Woo woo! Thanks to uh, Aidan for all the work he's put in on this and others. So we, we MCF give.co.uk if you want to give using a credit or debit card uh, and there's no limit to the amount that you can give uh, through this method MCF <laughs> give that's all one word MCF give .co.uk and oh it's so simple just you can use Apple Pay you can use Google Pay you can put your card details in you can just have fun there you all day pay, you can pay you can give with buttons and you, can, you can't give buttons oh that's the, that's the old offering where you oh. give buttons. Oh. This is like real money. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. So mcfgive.co.uk and uh, and you know that that's the money's going to go it's it's just it's just awesome. Everything is high tech, everything is My super word. duper, everything is like a well-oiled machine. Mm. It's uh, it's one of our core values. So as Chris leads us in a final worship song, mm. The details will be on the screen. Yes. Uh, because you'll no doubt have forgotten everything that we've just jabbered on about. <laughs> and um, I've forgotten what we've just jabbered on about. <laughs> and then we're going to come back together to read a, read a prayer together. And then we'll close our service. Let's join together and sing Servant King.
That's great. Now we're coming towards the end of our service this morning. We'll see you all again on Sunday at 10 o'clock um, for our Easter Sunday service. But as we're coming to the end, what we would love to do is to read a scripture together. Now, a Bible scripture, you're right. Ephesians 3, and we're going to read 14 to 21. Now, the words are going to come up on the screen so you can follow with us. Now, we want to read the scripture with our household. Some of them aren't here, they're at work, others are. Uh, staying somewhere else but we want to to all read this together so just hang on a sec while we go and find the rest of our household and then we're gonna all read together this scripture for this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and i pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of christ and, and to, to know, know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So as we come to the end of our Good Friday service today, we're just going to close with a word of prayer. I'm using some words from a Celtic blessing, which I trust will encourage you today, as we know that the God who loves us, who sent his son to die for us, is the God who is with us and remains with us now and forever. The Lord of the empty tomb, the conqueror of gloom, Come to us. The Lord in the garden walking, the Lord to Mary talking, come to us. The Lord in the upper room dispelling fear and gloom, come to us. The Lord on the road to Emmaus, the Lord who gave hope to Thomas, come to us. The Lord who appeared on the shore, giving life to us for evermore, come to us. Amen. God bless you.